Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Sister Wives with Mary Jane Kay. Today, I'll be giving my commentary on Sister Wives Season 4, Episode 2, Polygamous Date Nights. This episode, Cody goes on a date with each of his four wives, resulting in one wife being injured because Cody is the worst ski instructor in the history of the world. Cody gets a new car. Robin mentions a job the family is involved in with marketing. And Mary lets Christine know Cody isn't changing. Mary advises Christine as head wife that her relationship with Cody sucks because she needs to change herself and she needs to complain to Cody less about their marriage problems. Christine is the problem. Christine needs to work on herself. The message Mary gives is don't expect Cody to change. Don't expect Cody to make an effort or step up to the plate as a husband. That's Mary's stellar first wife advice. Mary calls Christine out onto the carpet, expecting her to do mental gymnastics to fix herself to be happy with her marriage. As is, Christine is the problem. She needs to work on herself. That's the loving sister wife advice Mary gave to Christine this episode, sister wife to sister wife, woman to woman. This episode, Robin shows the boundaries in her relationship with Mary. Robin can't help an injured Mary, her loving sister wife, because she is just so busy, her hands are full with all of her sick kids. So although Mary is immobile, laid up in bed, she just can't even though. She can't even go over there, even though Mary texted her that she needed help, yet we are supposed to accept that Robin wholeheartedly would be a surrogate for Mary if Mary said yes to that. The episode opens with Robin explaining how all the wives and Cody have been working this job with a marketing company, and Cody earned a bonus, and his bonus was this new car. Who knows what pyramid scheme they were working? But Cody earned this car as a bonus for all of his hard work. I wonder how much hard work Robin did. My guess is Janelle and Cody did most of the marketing. The whole family is gathered at Robin's house so they can see the new car all at once. It's a very exciting thing. It's a four-door convertible. There was nothing really special about it. Cody really likes convertibles. I've noticed that. I think Cody thinks it's some type of cool status symbol to drive a convertible when all it does is scream midlife crisis to me. And it probably helps hasten his receding hairline as well with all the wind swaying those strands to and fro as they just hang on for dear life when he's in the convertible with the top down. Mary loves that it's a convertible. She says it's a great date vehicle because she goes on so many dates with Cody. He just spoils Mary, doesn't he? Cody explains that in their culture, they tend to have individual relationships with each wife. So Cody is going on four different dates with each of his wives on four nights individually. Cody explains he does this so that they can nurture each relationship and he explains they don't always go do things as a whole family or Cody going with his four wives together. They have their individual relationships and their individual marriages. For the first date, after 22 years of promises, Cody is finally taking Mary skiing. Cody thinks living farther apart is hardest on him. It's harder on him than on anyone else in the family. Of course it's harder on him. Cody is always the victim. He has a victim mentality, at least with his behavior on the show. And he always only sees things from his perspective. This is probably hardest on his kids, particularly Janelle and Christine's kids living in separate homes. It's hard on his wives. It's very hard on Christine. She is struggling. But for Cody, he says it's hardest on him because it's such a hardship to have to juggle moving between homes that are less than a mile apart. The farthest one is Mary's house, which is a mile away. He has to move between these homes, rotating the schedule, having the right stuff. And that's a hardship. So for Cody, he sees this as being hardest on him because it inconveniences him. 
when really the ones who truly suffer and struggle with it the most are the kids and the wives. But of course, Cody is thinking about himself as usual. Cody gets to Mary's house. He has a briefcase in hand because he is a very important business guy. He's an entrepreneur, he's a guru, and he might have to stop his skiing day to do some business on the side of the mountain. Cody says there have been days since the move to Vegas that he and Mary have looked at each other and thought, wow, I haven't seen you in four days. Cody says it's almost like now it's four monogamous relationships that are in one family. Mary tells Cody she was talking to someone who wished her luck and he warned her that the last time he went skiing, he broke his leg. It's a very interesting foreshadow. Now, Mary injures herself. She doesn't quite break her leg, though. Cody asks, who says that kind of stuff? But wait till you see how sucky he is at instructing Mary. He doesn't even teach her the basics or how to stop by putting your feet in a V-shape. Listen, my hobbled ass went skiing a total of one time, and even I knew how the fuck to stop. It's one of the first things that they teach you. Cody didn't really tell Mary until she was already out of control. She was going so fast. Why would he not tell her before having her fly down a mountain? Mary recounts the good old days with Cody. She says Cody said to her that winter when they first met that they should go skiing. And it never happened 22 years past. Cody explains that he and Mary did not start out romantically. They became friends and it started off that way. In their faith, Cody explains they traditionally marry young. Mary was 19 and Cody was 22. Cody says that because they were young, he knew that developing a relationship based on character was going to be so much more important. That's what Cody was looking for. Yes, because Cody is truly, truly a man of character. Cody and Mary have their skis and their equipment, and Cody is walking far ahead of Mary, like way ahead of her. And Mary asks him why he is walking so far ahead of her. And Cody jokes that it's to ditch her. Now, we know Cody has tried to ditch Mary since the catfish incident, if not before, he abandoned her as a husband, intimacy-wise, over a decade ago. And he made it clear after the catfish, he wasn't down to be more than acquaintances. But the kicker is, Mary hung on, and she called him on their anniversary. And he asked her, why are you calling me? We aren't acting as married. Don't call. And Mary wanted to announce it publicly that they were done. And people have had very strong opinions about Mary staying, hanging on, do absolutely nothing to a ghost, refusing to leave Cody. People have given Mary so much shit. People have been unkind to her. Everyone had a lot to say about it, including me. And so Mary wanted to announce that she and Cody were done. And Cody refused. He said he didn't want to catch any flack he didn't want this on his reputation. He didn't want to take the heat. He preferred Mary keep taking the heat for longer. Cody was speaking of character just now. This is the character of this man. This is the character this man has. He would prefer his ex-wife, the mother of his kid, take the heat and the flack rather than him being a man and coming out and announcing it so he avoids catching the flack for himself. Cody didn't want this on his reputation. He didn't want the heat. So he preferred Mary keep taking the heat and the scrutiny for longer. Cody was speaking of character and that's Cody's character. Rather than coming out and announcing it, Cody refused. That's who Cody is. When people show you who they are, believe them. You would think Cody would be walking next to Mary during this date, helping her carry her ski shit. Nope. He just takes off. He walks ahead of her. Now, let me ask this. If this were Robin, would she tolerate her best customer doing her like that? He's walking like a half mile ahead, 
carrying his skis and his equipment as Mary is slowly making her way with her equipment up this hill. Robin wouldn't take that. Are you fucking kidding me? Mary calls after Cody. She tells him to wait because it's supposed to be a romantic date. And of course, Cody keeps walking. I would love to see Cody do Robin like that. Cody is going to be Mary's ski instructor. He instructs her how to snap in the skis and he welcomes Mary to hell. Mary tells Cody she will be better at this than he thinks and he warns Mary it's hard. She will feel like she can't walk. I wonder if he meant that literally or not because in the end that's kind of what happens. Mary really seems to want to impress Cody. Mary falls as Cody is teaching her before they even start skiing and she tells Cody, Cody will learn some serious patience today teaching her. Is Cody a patient man? I don't think so. Is Cody teachable? I don't think so. Is he a good teacher? I don't think so. He didn't even teach Mary how to stop before they ever got going. That would be the first thing you would think she should learn. Cody keeps coaching Mary to keep her balance and turn her knees in. Mary had in her head that if she can just show Cody that she can do this with no issues, she will be able to be like, ha ha, and prove Cody wrong. Mary is struggling because she's never skied before ever in her life, and Cody did not teach her all she needed to know. Her main method of stopping is putting her hands to the ground and tumbling down. Why did they not get a ski instructor? Cody seems to find this all amusing, but in the end, Mary gets injured because Cody is an idiot. He sucks at teaching, and Mary seems intent on wanting to impress Cody and prove him wrong. Mary is seated on the snow, resting after she comes to one of her fall stops, and the National Ski Patrol EMT sees Mary struggling. He sees her on the ground, and he asks, how she is, and he wants to help Mary. Mary tells him she is resting. Mary admits in confessional that she doesn't know how to stop. She just knows to fall to stop, and the idiot Kotex didn't tell her one of the most important things about skiing, which is stopping. The EMT shows Mary how to stop since Cody was incapable of the basics or safety before he took Mary skiing. He explains that Mary needs to make her skis into a wide pizza slice to stop. At one point, Mary almost falls because Cody pushes her. Cody admits that he is a lousy ski instructor. Mary is going super fast without knowing how to stop and she yells that she doesn't know how to stop and she falls and her skis unsnap and her right knee made a popping sound and Mary looks to be in a lot of pain. Cody says his initial reaction was that they were done skiing. You hear a pop in your knee and you're in pain? You think you might be done? I don't know. Mary tells Cody it doesn't hurt when it obviously does. And you could tell she doesn't want to disappoint Cody. She doesn't want to be inconvenient. Mary says they had a whole hour until the place closed, so she had full intentions of just resting for a bit and going back down one more time. It seems to me like Mary is desperate to impress Cody. And if she admits her knee is fucked and it hurts and they have to stop, that their date will stop. Their time will be ruined and Cody will be inconvenienced. Cody will favor her less. I think Mary already gets so little time and her whole sense of security comes from her time with Cody. She only has Leo, and Leo is almost grown. They have their own life at this point. She has Cody. All she has is her time with him. So she wanted to be convenient. She wanted to be pleasing to him. Dates are probably a very rare thing. So Mary wanted to be pleasing to Cody and convenient to Cody, even to her own physical detriment. Cody and Mary head back to the lodge, and they see the same EMT that was teaching Mary how to stop on the mountain. He examines Mary's knee, and Mary would put her pain level at a six when she felt the pop. And he tells Cody if this were his wife, skiing would be over and he would be taking his wife to the emergency room. Cody says Mary's injury is serious, and James the EMT suggests that Mary 
ice her knee immediately. Mary asks Cody if he's sure he doesn't want to go down with her and ski just a little bit more, one more time, slow, one last round. This is pathetic. Mary is clearly in pain, she is clearly injured, and she wants to impress Cody. She wants to please him. She wants to cater to him. She wants to not be inconvenient because this is her rare date night with her husband. She probably never gets dates at all, so in desperation with her injury, in all of her pain, if Cody agreed to ski one last time, she would do it all to please Cody even though she knows it would injure her and it would be bad for her physically. Mary puts pleasing Cody ahead of herself and her own well-being, it seems. Cody reminds Mary of James the EMT's advice, and Mary tells Cody he did a good job of keeping his promise to her to go skiing after 22 years. This ass kissing is so ridiculous. It is so ridiculous how on their nights and on dates with Cody, the wives kiss Cody's ass and they stroke his ego, even if they feel insecure in themselves or in their relationships, even if they know they aren't getting their wants and their needs met by their husband, they aren't getting what they deserve and they know it and they feel it in the marriage. They shove all of that down, they compartmentalize it, and they do all they can to keep sweet and to be pleasing and to be convenient for Cody. And they sing Cody's praises. All so Cody will gift them his attention and favor so that they can feel secure about themselves and their marriages and their situations, living polygamy with the crumbs that he gives. The whole thing is gross. Cody tells Mary that drinking hot chocolate reminds him of when he met her. I'll bet it reminds Cody of Robin too. Remember when Cody and Robin go on a date and he gives her the string ring and they can't keep their hands off each other and they are eye-fucking the whole time over hot chocolate? That's probably what Cody was thinking of as he is sitting there with Mary in that lodge. Cody says when he met Mary, it was in cold weather around Christmas time in the rain, and he remembers their first kiss. He says it wasn't all that romantic. Mary adds that Cody's proposal wasn't that romantic either. Cody says he was a novice. That was his first time, of course. Mary recounts that it was Christmas Eve. They were about to go out, and Mary turned around, and when she turned back around, Cody was standing there with a box in his hand and he handed her the box. She opened it and she looked at Cody and Cody said, maybe we should get married if you want to. Cody admits he was a no closer and he probably still is. Mary admits it's taken a few proposals to get expert at proposing for Cody. And Cody says nobody else thought he was romantic either when he proposed. Cody remembers his soulmate, of course, the hot chocolate brought back all the memories. They just flooded in. Best customer and soulmate. Cody tells Mary age is what got that romance going. He thinks Robin got spoiled with all the romance because he was older when he met Robin and he had plenty of age. Mary looks at Cody when he says this and she says, Robin, Robin, Robin. You could tell that Robin is always on Cody's mind on his tongue, that's all he thinks about, that's all he speaks about, even with his other wives, even on another wife's date night after she's injured herself trying to impress you. Cody apologizes, Mary is laughing. She probably knows how inconvenient it would be if she actually mentioned that she was annoyed at him with bringing up Robin and how Robin gets his best, his most romantic his most responsible. Cody says he and Mary discussed plural marriage before they got engaged and a lot after they got engaged. Of course, they always knew plural marriage was something they wanted to live. They always planned to take on more wives when they got married. They got engaged on Christmas Eve and Cody kissed Mary for the first time on New Year's Eve. Four months later in April, 
Cody and Mary got married. They had a big wedding reception. They had a huge celebration. There were lots of people. They danced a lot. Mary bit Cody's finger when Cody shoved cake in her face. Mary says, the song Everything I Own by Bread is a song Cody would always sing to her when they were courting. Puke in my mouth. So Mary's grandma insisted that Cody sing this song at the wedding. She had to beg Cody. She begged him to do it. I doubt Cody had to be begged though. Cody loves being the center of attention. He loves the limelight, even if he looks like the village idiot in order to be in the limelight. That doesn't matter as long as he gets the attention. Look at Cody's whole reality show. Look how he was dancing like a spastic monkey at his friend's wedding when he should have been helping Isabel move to North Carolina. No one has to beg Cody ever if it means attention for him. There's a chance for attention, even if Cody looks like a fool, Cody will be there, dying for the limelight. He's an important guy. He's a special little dude. Mary's grandma insisted Cody wasn't going to sing at his own wedding reception, but inevitably he does. It sucks. It's absolutely terrible. It's off key. It's pitchy. It's ear abuse, auditory abuse to the max. Cody admits everything was off tempo, everything was off completely. Mary was seated in front of Cody as he was serenading her at his wedding. Mary had a cheesy sweet smile and she was absorbing it in. It was super cringe, very cringe. Mary says it was the cutest thing that Cody didn't remember all the words to the song. Now listen, if Cody regularly serenaded Mary and this was a thing for them and this was their song and this was such a big thing for he and Mary, such a huge thing that our grandma begged Cody to perform at his own wedding, how the fuck did this jagaloon not know the words? Maybe Mary's grandma didn't like Cody too much or maybe this wasn't really Cody and Mary's song that he would always sing to her. Cody has a horrible voice. It's just as bad as the spastic jerking he calls dancing. Grandma probably really enjoyed seeing Cody sing. Cody sings to Mary again right here on the confessional couch. Cody acts like he's embarrassed, but he does it, and it's cringe AF, of course. My ears were assaulted this episode with no trigger warning at all. Over at Janelle's, it's the ass crack of dawn. It's now 6.15 in the morning. Her house gets rocking around 5.45 every morning. Logan is helping get the kids up and doing breakfast with Janelle and his siblings. Gabe loves instigating shit. He tells cameras that Garrison doesn't care about his grades. Gabe is playing video games and Garrison says Gabe can't stop talking about his video games. And Gabe points out that Garrison plays more video games than he does. Garrison tells Gabe that if he does that long enough, he will go blind. I never heard that saying about video games. I've heard it about other things though. Definitely other things. Janelle lets Gabe and Garrison know that they don't need to say anything to each other. There is no reason to have any communication at all. Janelle tells Gabe to knock it off and she warns Garrison not to make any comments to Gabe. There is no need to have any communication this morning, she warns again. That's Chanel's solution to fix the issues Gabe and Garrison have. They should just completely ignore each other and act like the other person doesn't exist, period. That's what Janelle has resorted to at this point. That's how frustrated she is. And who can blame her? She is basically a single mom always playing referee in her home. Janelle reminds Gabe to wake up Savannah nicely at 6.30 and get her breakfast. Gabe gets in Savannah's bed and he doesn't do it nicely. He pushes Savannah, telling her to wake up. He tries to physically pull her out of bed. He's a little rough and Savannah clearly isn't a morning person. Gabe is lucky she didn't kick him. She is pleading, leave me alone, leave me alone. Gabe gets Savannah's doll and he warns her if she doesn't get up, her doll gets a swirly in the toilet. Hell no. There will totally be fecal bacteria in that doll's hair, no matter how clean the toilet is. 
Hell no. But Gabe gives the doll a swirly and he announces to cameras he had no luck waking Savannah. Over at Mary's, Cody explains that Mary feels healthy except for her injured knee, of course. The doctor told Mary she had a partially torn or sprained MCL. The MCL is a strap of ligament that holds the knee in place and it will be a six to eight week recovery. She has to stay off her feet. That's how injured she was. And she wanted to go skiing again. Imagine how injured she would be if she had done that. All to please Cody. Mary is down. She's laid up in bed, immobilized, and it's no bueno. Mary is tired. And Cody lets Mary know he has plans today with Janelle. They're going to go hiking. And Cody wonders if he should just cancel. Mary says she's going to be fine. But she says it's frustrating that she finally got to go skiing and this happens. And now she can't do anything. But she doesn't regret it. It was a blast. She loved it. And she would ski again. Cody makes sure that Mary is fine with him leaving. And he tells her he loves her. And off he heads to be with Janelle. Mary says there have been times that all three of her sister wives have been there where Cody has said he was going to do something special for one of the sister wives. And Mary says there's a little part of her that thinks that's cool, but when are you going to do something for me? So Mary is always nervous when Cody does something for her in front of her sister wives. And she doesn't like to show her emotion about it because she doesn't want to hurt her sister wives and she doesn't want it to become uncomfortable for them. That's the opposite of Robin and Cody. Robin and Cody flaunt the special things they do for each other. They are very obvious and in your face about their relationship and their emotions, regardless of how jealous or uncomfortable it made the other wives. As we recall, Robin would gush about Cody being her soulmate. She would smell Cody's jacket that one of his kids was wearing and say, oh, I miss your dad. He's my soulmate. And Cody would gush about being lovesick, saying Robin was his soulmate, acting like a teenager with a crush. The whole thing was sick, especially knowing the situation that he had a bunch of other kids and three other wives to be sensitive to in this situation. Mary has the sense not to be showy about attention from Cody, at least, and not to be showy about emotions. Cody gets to Janelle's for their date, and he complains that his back hurts from helping Mary. Janelle texted Mary about her injury to check in. Cody says that Mary wiped out and it tore her ligament. And Janelle says Mary's going to have to stay off of her feet and it's going to drive her crazy. Cody says Mary is lamenting today and he feels really bad for Mary, but not too bad or he would have stayed with her. Janelle and Cody head to Red Rock Canyon for hiking. It's 20 minutes away. Janelle has been very consistent with her workouts since starting out with Bill last summer. And Janelle has also added other activities to working out. She feels empowered, like she can physically accomplish anything now. Janelle feels confident in her fitness. She feels she can tackle anything she might run into while out hiking. I have to say, I really, really, really admire Janelle's work ethic and her ambition. Janelle is very excited to be able to hike because she feels she is capable, like working out has paid off and added to her quality of life. A few years ago, Cody and Janelle went to Arches National Park in Utah and there were very challenging hikes that Janelle wanted to do, and she wasn't physically able to do them back then. And Janelle now wishes she could tackle those hikes. She feels like now she isn't cut off from any activity she wants to do with Cody because she knows she is physically capable of doing it, and it's very liberating for her. For Janelle, this hike is a milestone in her fitness journal to say she is accomplishing something here. Cody says Janelle is fun to hike with now and Janelle feels she has her life back and she can see a long future of she and Cody doing more and more physically intense things. So far, Janelle has lost 10 pounds and 18 inches. She has gone from not being able to get off of the couch without pushing off with her hands to squatting with 90 pounds on her shoulders. She is doing this for her health, but there is a huge change in her strength and mobility and in her flexibility. It's been a huge payoffs for the six months of work she has done. 
She says she won't ever go back to the way she used to live. Fitness will always be a part of her life now. Cody feels like Janelle is less exhausted with the kids now. Cody says in plural marriage, there is this major adjustment in the beginning. And a wife comes in. And in the beginning, he and Janelle had to adjust not only to each other, but Janelle had to adjust to he and Mary. And then Janelle and Mary had to adjust to each other. It was extremely complicated, but they had a beautiful experience together that bonded them when Logan was born. Logan, of course, is Cody and Janelle's first child, their son, Logan, family's first child. Logan brought Christine and Mary deeper into the relationship as well. And then Aspen came and then Leo came in and the kids were the glue for them on some levels. Janelle thinks the kids held them together all those years, but she can honestly say now she is more in love with Cody than she ever was in the beginning. And Cody agrees that he is more in love with Janelle now. It's interesting how Cody is in love with Janelle during season four, episode two, but the tell-all before last, Cody admitted he didn't love Janelle. And he said, if the host asked Janelle if she loved him, she would say she was not in love with him when the host asked Cody if he loved her. I don't think Cody loved Janelle in a romantic way especially considering how much he disrespected her by taking her money to secure the mansion for Robin while leaving her out to dry, refusing to pay off the land and refusing to allow Janelle use of the joint family account like both Robin and Christine got when Janelle was the primary breadwinner for the family for all of those years, for decades for the family. She had Cody's back. She supported Cody's kids and all of his wives. She kept the family afloat financially. Cody rejected Janelle's sacrifice. He left Janelle out to dry when she needed his support. And anytime she would mention the land and her needs to pay off the land, Cody would warn her that if she mentioned it, he would get angry, angry at Janelle, as if his anger was a threat. If Cody ever loved Janelle at all, he would never have told her she needed to become Robin. She needed to be obedient. She needed to be more submissive. She needed to fundamentally change herself to the core of her being. And she needed to become a Stepford wife like the goblin blowing smoke up her best customer's ass. And of course, Cody initially suggested that her kids needed to apologize and kiss the ring. And she needed to submit to the patriarchy and change who she is as a person for Cody to be willing to invest in her and their marriage. Cody changed the terms on Janelle. And Janelle may have loved Cody. She may have seen Cody as her best friend, but I don't think Cody loved Janelle or he would not treat her so disrespectfully. He wouldn't treat his sons so neglectfully or manipulatively. Janelle and Cody are holding hands, walking down this trail. And Janelle says, she sees many couples and when their kids leave, they have separate lives and they don't interact much. But Janelle sees a different path for herself and Cody. She sees that as the kids leave and they have grandkids, she sees their relationship continuing to be very involved with each other until they die. Obviously, Janelle and Cody are separated now after Cody asked Janelle to morph into Robin and he tried to change the terms of their whole marriage and he asked Janelle to fundamentally change herself. Change herself as a person after all these years for him to be willing to invest in their marriage. He refused to meet Janelle's needs. He refused to hear her voice. So now Janelle is separated from Cody. It's probably the best decision she ever made. Cody says it's kind of like their hike. They hiked up this path. They had to separate while they explored something else, but this path ends with them on it together. Or as Janelle once foreshadowed, their path ends with the best customer and his soulmate riding off together into the sunset with Cody, free of his obstacles to his goals in life, his other wives and kids who were holding him back from accomplishing monogamish hell with Robin the Goblin. Over at Christine's, she is calmly waking her kids, gently giving them hugs, cooking them breakfast. 
And we learn there is a Valentine's daddy-daughter dance coming up at school, and there is only one Cody, and there are five girls who want to go to this daddy-daughter dance with Cody. Cody is taking all the girls, but Gwen wanted a date for herself, so she asked Logan to be her date for the dance. It's cute. It's adorable. Gwen chose Logan because all the little girls wanted to choose Cody, their dad, and Gwen wanted her own person, so she chose Logan. Gwen is smart. She probably saw how certain girls need more attention from Cody, and she knew she wouldn't get much time from him, and she probably saw how all of the moms struggled with sharing her dad, and so she wanted someone just for her, and she felt she deserved that, which she did, of course, and so... She asked Logan, and that's adorable, and it's awesome that this kid knows what she wants, and she knows what she deserves, and she gets it. Christine is walking Gwen and Isabel to school. They decided to walk to school one day a week for exercise, and Christine is heading over to Mary's house to see if she needs help today, since Mary is down for the count. See, I just want to point out something here. Remember when Cody accused Christine of not being a good sister wife? Yet Christine is taking time out of her day when she has a baby to care for and very little time to herself to do chores while the kids are at school. And she is going out of her way to help Mary. Robin got a text from Mary wanting help. And Robin told Mary she had sick kids. She wouldn't be much help. She has a baby to care for. She can't do it. Her hands are full. It looks to me like Christine is a very good, supportive, loving sister wife. And Robin is only there as a sister wife when she needs something from the other person and it benefits her. Mary is laid up in bed in pain and Christine asks how Mary is doing. Mary says she's doing good provided she does not move. Cody explains that each wife has a relationship with her sister wives and he has a relationship with each of his wives. If that relationship with one of his wives is bad, that wife will go get a consensus from her sister wives on the problem she has with Cody to see if she can get advice from her sister wives or if she can tell her sister wives they're the problem or maybe she can tell her sister wives how much Cody is the problem. Christine is sitting with Mary on her bed and she notices Mary has a cute family picture with Cody and Leo and she says she never did a family pic ever herself with Cody and her kids. Mary asks why and Christine says she never did one. Christine says they never got along well enough for Cody to cooperate and do that. And she says it's hard asking Cody to do something when you aren't on good terms with him. It's very tough to ask Cody to do something. Of course, Cody refuses to be inconvenienced unless you have done something that benefits him, that earns you favor with him as a wife. So then he becomes willing to do whatever thing, provided he isn't too put out by it. Christine says, since she and Cody aren't on good terms, he isn't going to want to do family pictures with her. Why is Cody such a bitch? These family pictures aren't just for Cody or Christine. It's for his kids and for the memory so they can show their kids later. Why is Cody such a fucking diva? He can't do anything without acting like a fucking princess, like he's the king of the family. I don't get why he couldn't just man up, grow a pair, and take a family photo, regardless of the state of his marriage with Christine. It's for his kids. It's not for him or for her. Cody doesn't act like a man. It's as if you have to blow smoke up his ass and cook ego feasts just to get him to barely do even the bare minimum of what a normal father and a husband would do. But Cody is far from normal in any sense. Mary asks Christine if she and Cody are still struggling, and Christine says, yeah. And Mary asks if anything is getting better. Christine says there are things about their relationship they need to discuss and fix. Mary is an idiot when it comes to relationships. She is the last person who should be giving relationship advice, and she gives terrible advice, almost as terrible as the advice Robin gives Cody when she advises Cody to insist on sleeping on the couch or in Christine's home when Christine made it clear she does not want Cody there. And Robin suggested Cody should cross Christine's boundaries and Christine's sense of security. Robin suggests 
Cody should ignore Christine's wishes. He should disrespect what Christine wants in her home by staying there regardless of what she wants. This is not on Christine. Christine doesn't need to fix herself and improve herself and do mental gymnastics to accept a marriage and to accept a man who refuses to invest and make an effort for her where she needs to change to tolerate being happy with less than any woman deserves in a marriage and from a husband. And Cody gets to stay the idiot he is and do nothing and change nothing. And she is supposed to do mental gymnastics to be okay with everything as is. Mary advises that she and Cody went through the same thing. They were bad. She and Cody could not say anything to each other without setting each other off. Mary tells Christine until she starts changing and she starts improving and doing things better, it won't make a difference. Christine asks, at what point does Cody realize he has made mistakes too? Christine wants to know when Cody will make an effort, when Cody will take accountability. Even back then, Christine knows this isn't all on her and she can't just shove this down and accept less than any woman who respects herself would feel they deserve from their marriage and from their husband. Mary doesn't know when that point will be where Cody will realize he has made mistakes too, where Cody will take accountability. And Christine asks Mary, well, has Cody realized he's made mistakes with you? She asks, has Cody talked to you about his mistakes? Christine asks Mary, has it helped you? In other words, has you working on yourself and doing mental gymnastics to pretend to be happy with less than you deserve, has it worked? Has it produced better results, a better relationship? Christine knows the answer is fuck no, and she knows Mary's advice is a crock of shit. Mary says, there have been times when Cody has said, okay, yes, I was stupid, but she says it takes Cody a long time. Does it take Cody a long time? Does he eventually own his mistakes? Does Cody ever take actual accountability? Or is it when he needs something from a wife that he will cave and say the right words and do lip service to benefit in some way when he needs something from them? I have never seen Cody take any accountability. He doesn't act like a grown man. Mary makes excuses for Cody. Her excuse is, Christine, it's hard for guys to come back and say I was wrong. That's bullshit. A real man who acts like a man who has a spine and a backbone, who isn't a coward, does not have difficulty at all taking ownership of their mistakes or taking accountability or admitting that they were wrong or apologizing. That's bullshit that it's harder for men. That's complete and utter bullshit. The way Mary is talking, in my opinion, it's based on her antiquated mindset and her indoctrination and the Kool-Aid she drinks from her indoctrination into a faith where it is all on the woman to keep sweet, to be convenient, to serve the husband, and it's fucked up, it's not true, it's not right, and it's not fair. Christine needed a friend. She needed someone real. She needed truth and genuine advice. Not some bullshit to keep Christine subservient and sweet where all the burden and accountability is placed on her as if it's her fault she can't do the mental gymnastics to be happy with the sham of a marriage to a coward with no backbone who has his balls in the sling of the favorite wife. Christine looks sad. She looks down at this point and she tells Mary, I have to do everything one-sided then. The expectation seems to be that it's Christine's problem if she is unhappy and she better get herself happy because nothing is changing with Cody. She can't expect him to take accountability or be a man. He's a man. It's hard for him. So she needs to shove it down and accept it. It's her fault she is unhappy. It's her fault that her marriage isn't working. That's bullshit. Christine says she has to do everything one-sided then and she has to fix herself. Christine even tells Mary, so I have to fix me? And Mary nods her head yes and she tells Christine, you do. Mary is a fucking idiot when it comes to relationship advice. If she really gave a fuck about Christine, woman to woman, human being to human being, she would never sit there and tell Christine she has to fix herself. That is some bullshit of the highest order and it stinks big time. Christine asks, it's just one-sided then? And Mary tells Christine, 
it might be a while, but yeah, it's one-sided. Mary tells Christine she is serious about her advice. Christine asks Mary, has that really helped you? And Mary says it has. And Christine tells Mary she doesn't see that it has. I love Christine for telling it like it is. She isn't accepting Mary's bullshit or her narrative or her bullshit advice. Christine is waking up. Christine says she sees how Mary is being so sweet all the time and she is wondering if it's really doing Mary any good. Christine points out to Mary that Cody hasn't gone out of town with her at all, all of last year. Last year, Mary didn't get a birthday or an anniversary. Mary looks absolutely shocked that Christine is telling truths on camera, calling her out. She looks pissed. Mary says Christine is right. Last year was bad timing right around her birthday and around her anniversary, so it never happened. Cody never did anything special for her. And Mary keeps thinking it'll happen. She isn't at a point where she can just blow it off where it doesn't matter. It matters to Mary, but she says what matters more to her is the relationship she has with Cody when he is around. See how Mary knows it devastates her that she didn't get what the wives usually get for the birthdays and anniversaries? Both were skipped last year. It upsets her. She is not okay with this. But she ignores it. She ignores how sad it makes her and how insignificant it makes her feel in her marriage to Cody. She shoves it down because it matters more to her to have good times with Cody when he is around, to be convenient, to keep sweet, to be easy for Cody, to stay in a good place. See how these women are afraid to say how they really feel because if they are truthful with Cody, if they are difficult, if they are seen as inconvenient, if they are seen as difficult for Cody, the one night of four they have with him, which they live for to feel secure in their marriages, he will get angry with them. He will get moody and it will affect their time with Cody. It will affect their favor with Cody. It will affect how much Cody is willing to invest with them, what he's willing to do for them. It will affect his general mood with them. And Cody knows how much the wives rely on that time and attention from him to feel secure. So Cody uses it as a pressure, as a manipulative tool to keep them easy, to keep them sweet, and to keep them convenient, shoving down their wants and needs, quieting their voices to please Cody on their night with him, so he will pretend to be a decent man and a decent husband and father on their one night of four. So he will go to the daddy-daughter dance or take the family photo. And that is emotional abuse. It's manipulation. It's unhealthy. And it's toxic as fuck. I don't even think it's just polygamy that makes these women unhappy. It's not just sharing a husband. It's that this husband in particular, Cody with his personality type and his selfishness and his ego, he understands the dynamics. He understands that his crumbs of attention give the women security and he keeps them on pins and needles, shoving what they need down to be convenient for him so they can feel good, so they can get the crumbs. They need the fuel to keep them going that week because they still have to function as moms to their kids. Cody understands the dynamics. He knows how everything works. He's manipulative as fuck and it's pathetic. That Mary and that all the wives know it too and they all enable Cody to continue manipulating them into accepting less and shoving down their needs, quieting their voice. Because should they speak up? Should they be too inconvenient? Should they fuck up Cody's mood? They will compromise getting those crumbs for themselves and those crumbs for their kids to make it through until the next night he is over. Christine says when Cody is around, she tries to be happy and fine, but sometimes she cannot block that underlying current. You can only shove it down for so long before you explode. Christine asks Mary, so I just have to pretend that everything is okay? And Mary says, no, you don't pretend that. But she says, you make the best of it when you're together and you figure out another way to work through your own issues without putting it all on Cody. So when you're with Cody, you should never, ever bring up issues to work out. You should never talk through them. 
You pretend everything is great. You ignore the issues. You make it fun for him. You make it convenient. You give him a blowy, perhaps. And you don't ever mention anything to him. Just find a way on your own to fix yourself, to do those mental gymnastics, to just be happy with things without even saying a word to Cody. Yes, this sounds totally effective. This is definitely killer advice. Smart. The best. Look at the mountains and such. Christine tells Mary it went back to the courtship with a Robin. Christine still has issues with that. Mary tells Christine that Christine isn't moving past that. And Christine says, no. And she explains that until Robin came into the family, she was the last wife for a very long time. And Christine says, jealousy is a normal emotion when a new wife comes along. And it's been a very long time since there has been a new wife. Christine says there are lots of conflicts within her, and that is the source of her unhappiness. Christine explains that her relationship with Cody used to be easy. She was special to Cody. Cody was open. Cody was loving with Christine, and Christine felt special. Christine also felt that Cody was doing his best to have Mary and Janelle feel special too. Christine thinks Cody was balancing the three of them well. Mary, Janelle, and Christine, Cody could handle. And Christine doesn't think Cody is balancing the four of them with Robin joining the family. See, Cody was able to give a similar investment level with three wives. With Robin, we know Cody invests more with her and with her kids. He spends more time there. He is attuned to Robin's needs and Robin is incredibly needy. And he meets all of Robin's needs to the detriment and neglect of every other wife and child in the family and to the detriment of all of the relationships. He is giving Robin and her kids much more than everyone else as he gives everyone else much less, significantly less than he did with three wives to give Robin and her kids so much more than everyone else in the family. Cody isn't doing things fairly and equally anymore. And he was doing that before Robin came into the picture. When it was just Janelle, Christine, and Mary, Cody was pretty much equally invested in them. The problem is Robin matters more to Cody and Robin and her kids get more time. They get more investment and more effort from Cody than any other wife and her kids. Before Robin, every wife got about the same level of investment and effort from Cody. So sharing a husband was less of an issue when it was just Christine, Janelle, and Mary. Christine says it's very difficult and she doesn't trust that Cody will come around. And of course she shouldn't. And as we know, she was the first wife to say sayonara. Mary adds that Christine not trusting Cody, not trusting that he will come around, that is what is keeping Cody away. And Christine says it's gone, meaning the trust is gone. Mary is blaming Christine for not trusting Cody to do things fairly and equally like he used to. He is no longer doing things fairly and equally with his actions. So of course, she doesn't trust that Cody's going to do it in the future if he's already stopped doing it. So Mary is blaming Christine for not trusting Cody to do things fairly and equally. And it's her fault that she doesn't trust him to be better. And that turns Cody off. Mary gives Christine Isabel as an example. I don't think it correlates, but Mary asks, Christine, how many times have you done something for Isabel? And then Isabel will gripe at her regardless. Mary asks how frustrating that is for Christine. And Christine says it's very frustrating. And Mary points out that's exactly how Cody feels. Mary says she apologizes for throwing it at Christine, but she tells Christine she is the only person she can change. She can't change anybody else. Mary tells Christine, go have fun. Don't bring up problems with Cody. Just have fun and be happy and don't bring up problems. Don't you dare communicate. That would be too inconvenient. Christine tells Mary that's easier said than done, but she's going to try. Mary says it's hard when another wife comes into the family because things are shaken up and you have to redefine who you are and what role you have in the family. Mary thinks that is what Christine is doing because for 16 years, Christine was the most recent wife. 
Mary says, being the first wife of four, she gets where Christine is coming from because she not only had to reevaluate who she was and her role in the family with Janelle, but she also did it with Christine and with Robin. It shakes things up when a new wife comes in. Things are different. And you need to figure out who you are and what place you are in the family. And she says, Christine hasn't figured that out yet. Mary admits, living plural marriage isn't something easy to do. She says, it's not like you just go out and have these wonderful bonds with your sister wives all of a sudden. It's a lot of work, a lot of hard work. Robin says, it's not for amateurs. And Christine warns, don't try this at home. It's interesting how Robin says, it's not for amateurs. She had zero experience as an actual sister wife in plural marriage before this. She came in with no experience as a sister wife, and now she's only lived as a plural wife for one and a half years, and she was more concerned with the husband than having sister wives. And once she came into the family, it fucked up the whole dynamic of the family to the point where now she lives monogamously with Cody and her kids years later, and it's also interesting how Mary says, you need to figure out who you are and what place you are in the family when a new wife comes in. And Christine is now figuring it out, what place you are in the hierarchy. See, now Robin, as favorite wife, is in the first place, the favorite. And now Christine has to cope with being in a different place in the hierarchy than she was before Robin joined the family. It's interesting how Mary used the term figuring out what place you are rather than what role you have in the family. Christine's role didn't change in the family, but her place did. It's not that she is no longer the last wife. She no longer gets the most favor from Cody because Cody gives Christine's former place to Robin. And Christine has to cope with going from the highest place to last place for Cody. And we know she felt like basement wife. And eventually Christine left because she felt she did not matter as much as Robin, the favorite wife. So Cody can say there is no favorite wife and there is no hierarchy all day long, but there totally is. And it's very interesting how Mary said Christine has to now figure out what place she is in the family rather than Christine has to figure out what role she has in the family. When you think of place, placement, you think of competition, maybe horse racing, first place, second, and Christine's place changed in the family. Her spot in the hierarchy shifted. And rather than Cody maintaining fair and equal investment levels, he gave varying investment levels based on where he placed his wives in the hierarchy. Once Robin came along, Robin was always the favorite, and that's the problem. Over at Robin's, she mentions that she heard that Mary fell when Cody and Mary were skiing, and Mary hurt her knee really bad. Mary texted Robin asking, can somebody help a sister wife? Robin felt bad because she just could not. She could not go over there to help Mary because she had four sick kids. Robin thinks Christine was over there to help and check on Mary and she feels bad. She couldn't go over to help Mary, but she says she isn't much help right now. She has four sick kids. So basically, Mary shouldn't expect Robin to be there for her, but we all know if this happened to Robin, she would milk the fuck out of this injury. Cody would not be leaving her side to go on the other dates or for any reason at all. He would wait on Robin hand and foot every second of every day and she would bitch and moan about her pain and suffering and how hard this is for her. Cody and Christine are going paintballing for their date night and there is even an extra surprise. It was Christine's idea they both agreed paintballing would be fun. It would be fun to shoot at each other for a while. They both love paintball, and Cody has another surprise in store for Christine. Instead of making an effort to give her equal time and investment, instead of Cody communicating and being willing to discuss the issues, so Christine feels like Cody is invested and she matters to him, Cody sprung for a helicopter ride. It's a cool surprise, but it would do nothing for me if I was in Christine's position. I would prefer my husband was around an equal amount of time, making an effort to be more invested with me, communicating, spending time with my kids, than taking me on a helicopter ride that was probably free. Christine says paintballing is cheap therapy for herself and for Cody. 
She says, just to be able to shoot each other, it ought to go down as one of the rules to a good marriage. Paintballing is interactive and Cody is happy. It's not just talking. We know Cody hates talking because if Christine uses her voice, he knows he will be inconvenienced by how she feels. And remember, she is supposed to pretend to be the happiest wife in the world with the most adoring husband. She is supposed to shove down her wants and needs. She is supposed to shove down the issues and just be happy whether she is or not. Christine should be happy Cody is there at all. And when Cody is there, the little amount of time he is there, it's on Christine to be convenient and sweet and pleasing to Cody or he won't want to come around or do family photos if she wants anything that would be normal from a man, a father, and a husband from Cody, she has to shove down her feelings, praise him endlessly, please him, and kiss his ass so he can give crumbs. Because Cody isn't like other men who want to be there for their families, who want to be there for their wives. If you want favor, if you want basics, you have to play a role. You have to be convenient for Cody to... Be willing to act normal, like a normal father, like a normal man, like a normal husband. Cody says, when he and Christine start talking too much, they start bringing up their problems. Christine looks frustrated. She shakes her head no at this. See how Cody's strategy is to ignore everything and let his wife come to the conclusion that she needs to drop it and make do with things as is. She needs to shove it down and then there are no problems for Cody at least. It's convenient for Cody, at least, to the detriment of everyone around him because Cody is a dick who really only cares about himself and his convenience at the end of the day. Cody reiterates that they don't want to bring up problems on their date. Christine says they want to have fun and she'd rather just shoot him than bring up problems. Imagine how lonely Christine feels, how suffocated that she has a husband she cannot communicate with. And when she does communicate, it goes ignored. She gets blamed. Cody gets moody. He gets angry and he turns it on his wife that it's her fault she said how she feels. It's her fault she wants to talk to him to get to the bottom of the issues. And she ruined her limited time with him and she ruined his mood. How alone one must feel. Christine wants to work on her marriage. She wants to talk about her problems. She wants Cody to communicate. Cody refuses to talk. He refuses to address it. He doesn't want to work on anything. He wants to manipulate his wives with his moods and with favor so that they know not to bring it up and they know to be convenient and to be pleasing for the little time he is there. And should they decide to use their voice to bring the issues up, it's their fault they ruined their night with him because Cody has no intention of working on anything other than training his wife to behave as he wants and shove it down. They have to learn to be happy as is. It's their problem. If they have issues with their marriage, Cody isn't doing any more. He doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck how his wife feels. If they can't learn to shove it down and that ruins his time with them, if they become inconvenient, if they aren't easy, he lets them know it's their fault. It's their problem. There's something wrong with them. They ruined everything. And Mary reinforced that with Christine. All the accountability is placed on Christine. She has no one who validates her, who understands. I don't know how she did this for so long. Cody shoots Christine and she is covered in paint. And Cody yells, who the man? Now, when he yelled that, I was looking around on the screen trying to find the man. I'm still looking. I don't see anyone I would classify as the man in this scene. Cody says he feels bad for shooting Christine, and Christine felt bad that she lost. Next comes the big surprise. Cody leads Christine out of the paintball place. His hands are covering Christine's eyes because Cody was too lazy to get a blindfold. They could have used that blindfold later. Cody isn't too smart. There is a luxury shuttle waiting to take Cody and Christine to a helicopter. Christine was shocked that Cody surprised her with a helicopter ride. Christine tells Cody he's awesome and Cody is eating it up. This is the response he wanted, the ego feast, the adulation. And he probably thinks with getting Christine the ring for Christmas 
and the most extravagant date with the paintballing and then the helicopter ride, that now Christine will be more flexible to do those mental gymnastics to shove down the issues so she can just keep sweet, be pleasing, and be easy and convenient on Cody's nights with her so Cody doesn't have to be inconvenienced anymore with these pesky issues he has no intention of ever working on. A long time ago, Christine suggested wanting to go on a helicopter ride, and a friend of Cody's had a helicopter tour business. It's a beautiful helicopter ride as the sun is setting. There are all the Vegas lights that, of course, Cody loves. Cody explains that in the past, he and Christine's relationship has been based on the lightness of life and the pleasure of being alive and being together, and they have had a couple of years of struggle. They have been able to find those good moments still once in a while, and here they have found it again, that good place, according to Cody. One paintball date and a free helicopter ride where the guy gets to advertise his business on the show may have made Cody feel like it's problem solved with Christine, but I doubt Christine feels like any progress in their relationship was even made, even if they have good moments. If they don't communicate and listen and understand and make efforts, and compromise. If Cody is unwilling, these nice moments Cody thinks solve everything are just lipstick on a pig ultimately. The helicopter lands to take in the beautiful view. They catch the sunset and Christine and Cody hug and Christine loves it. When Cody first met Christine, he says he felt this great bolt of energy like he was struck by lightning. Cody really liked Christine and at one point Christine told Cody, out of all the guys I know, you are the one I'd like to marry. Christine thinks Cody took it as a proposal. Cody called Christine's dad and the head of their church, and he needed permission from them to court Christine. And two months later, they married. Christine explains how growing up, she always wanted to be the third wife. She never wanted to be a first wife. She was not interested in monogamy. Now she is, though. She perceived the second wife as the hardest position of being a wedge into an already existing couple, and that sounded like way too much work. Third wife seemed easy. The first wife and second wife have already worked out the glitches. So as third wife, she would come in and get married, and she thought it would flow easily. But it didn't work out that way. After Christine and Cody got married, things got rough. And as Christine is saying this, Cody looks anxious because he isn't quite sure what Christine is going to say. He looks down. He's fidgeting with his fingers like, oh, fuck. Christine realized Cody wasn't the guy she thought he was. She thought Cody was this life of the party guy, that he was fun. He was funny. He was easygoing. She thought that's what Cody was when they got married. And Christine saw this other side to Cody right when she married him. Mary and Janelle didn't have the best relationships. They were new in having a plural family as well. As we recall from becoming sister wives, Christine noticed on her honeymoon, even on her wedding day, that Cody wasn't the guy she thought he was. It seems he didn't let his mask slip before he married Christine. With most people with narcissistic traits, they are very charming and fun and attractive. They have good energy, it seems. And then when they know they have you, they flip the switch. Sometimes right away, sometimes little by little, but inevitably the mask comes off. And it's not just with narcissists. Everyone has a good side and a bad side. No one is perfect. No one is expected to always be their perfect ideal self. So I always say, Date a person, date some more, spend time with them in all situations, live with them. The only way you will ever really know a person is if you live with them. And then if you can both accept each other's bad side, mask off, then marry them. Here is Christine's experience from becoming sister wives when she realized Cody was not the man she thought she married. On our honeymoon, a drive through the sticks of Montana, I was struck by the realization that I didn't know Cody very well. Once we got into the car, he still had the faraway look on his face that I'd seen at our wedding. He seemed distant and unreachable. I began to understand that he felt overwhelmed. However, I didn't know how to talk to him about what he was feeling. 
I had no idea how to reach out to him. I just sat there in silence. Watching him drive with that look on his face made me unbearably sad. I realized that I had no idea how to express my feeling with him or ask him to share his with me. I never doubted that Cody was the man of my dreams, but I began to worry that I'd married him too soon. Christine goes on. Until our honeymoon, I had thought he was a fun, loving guy, but that was the extent of it. Now there was this distant, grumpy man at my side, burdened by something I couldn't understand, and I worried that I might be the source of his anxiety. This is where Christine learned Cody isn't this fun, loving, charming guy. He's moody, he's distant, he's grumpy, he's cold, he's angry, and Cody only let the mask slip after he already married the church royalty, who he knew would give him some status, some clout in his church community. Imagine being 19 and realizing the guy you think you are in love with is pulling a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, not having a lot of life experience, not having a lot of relationship experience, and then being shocked and confused by it. This should have been Christine's happiest time, and she was sad. And this marriage took years of her life, the best years of her life, for her to realize she would not be able to shove down the red flags any longer. And Christine finally left Cody, understanding her worth and understanding she deserved more than Kotex was capable of. Cody says, the best part of Christine coming into the family, besides that he was in love with her, which we know is untrue because he said as much last season, was that Christine was able to manage a sweet relationship with Mary and Janelle. Mary and Janelle were struggling to communicate with each other at the time, so Christine came into the family and she brought stability to that situation. She made everyone's lives a little brighter. So Cody is praising Christine for making his life more convenient and less hellish because he no longer had to deal with the Janelle Mary nightmare he was triangulated into. Christine buffered it. She took that strife off of Cody's shoulders, making it convenient for Cody, making it easier, making it less stressful. Cody didn't love Christine. He married Christine for status in the church, and she benefited him by taking the Mary Janelle problem off of his hands. If I was Christine, I wouldn't be happy about what Cody is saying here. She doesn't look happy. It isn't about love and appreciating Christine and her sacrifice. This is about what Christine did for Cody to make his life easier with the Mary Janelle thing. It's very cruel and it's condescending and it's manipulative. Cody didn't really seem like he was honest with Christine about the dynamics in his home between himself and Mary, himself and Janelle, and Mary and Janelle before he married Christine. So a young, naive, in love Christine was walking into a shitstorm she never saw coming, married to a guy with many narcissistic traits who just let the mask slip as soon as he caught her. And it's no surprise Christine was sad. It's no surprise she struggled to find the light. Cody says Christine was like icing on a cake. Next, Cody and Christine go to Froyo where they both agree this was the perfect date. Christine apologizes to Cody. She says it's been a rough year and she hugs Cody and Cody immediately invalidates her. He says, it's been a rough year for everybody. In other words, don't think you are the only one who had it rough. After Christine apologizes, she promises Cody that she will be more grateful. What am I watching? Christine doesn't need more gratitude. Cody needs gratitude. Cody needs to be a better husband and father. He needs to take accountability. He needs to get his balls out of that sling Robin keeps them in. And he needs to man up and communicate. He needs to be willing to invest and make an effort and address the issues in his marriage with Christine like a grown-ass man. But because Christine zipped it, she shoved down her issues and she made it convenient. She acted like she was a happy, pleased wife and Cody got her the paintball. He got her the helicopter ride and she is now cowering to Cody, apologizing, promising to have gratitude for the crumbs he gives. And Cody now thinks the issues are done and Christine will just be happy. This happy, pleasing wife singing a happy song and those issues they had 
If they don't address them, they will just disappear as if by magic, right? Christine tells Cody she and Mary had a great talk today. It wasn't a great talk. It was Mary manipulating Christine with her shit advice to shut up, grin, and bear it, and keep sweet. Mary's advice was that it's Christine's problem, that Christine has issues in her marriage due to Cody's lack of equal investment and time. According to Mary, it's not Cody's problem, it's Christine's. It's her fault, she can't accept it. That isn't advice, that's a load of rubbish for Christine to put out on the sidewalk that Mary gave her. No one in their right mind would take relationship advice from Mary. Cody wants to know what Mary and Christine talked about and Christine explains that Mary called her on the carpet. Christine explains that Mary told her she wasn't being grateful for anything and that she makes Cody feel like she does not appreciate him. And again, Christine apologizes. She is sorry for not appreciating Cody. Where is Cody in this, manning up, apologizing for not giving Christine and her kids the equal time and investment he should be? Where is Cody? Where is Cody taking accountability? Where is Cody apologizing for not appreciating Christine? Where is Cody's willingness to make an effort to meet Christine's needs and make her feel appreciated? This feels like one-sided bullshit and it feels very drink the Kool-Aid when Mary is reinforcing this bullshit with Christine rather than being real with her. No woman in her right mind would accept this fuckery at all. I don't care if it's monogamy or polygamy or polyamory or whatever the fuck you want to do with your life. I don't give a fuck. No woman would accept a partner like this. After Christine apologizes, Cody doesn't apologize too. Cody tells Christine not that she doesn't need to apologize, not that he is also sorry, not that he needs to make more of an effort to be there and to appreciate her. No, no, no. He tells Christine, oh, it's all right. He loves her. They will work it out. He says, we will work it out. We, he and Christine, or does he expect Christine, she, to work this out within herself on her own as he does absolutely nothing close to making an effort to meet Christine's needs as her husband. This is utter bullshit. I don't like the smell. Over at Robin's, all the kids are sick with a cough that originated with Dayton. Robin is exhausted because she stays up all night with Saul, supporting him through his cough. Robin is tired, but she is going out with Cody tonight. Soulmate and best customer are hitting the town. Ka-ching, ka-ching. Robin needs the break. She hasn't been out on a date since Saul has been born. My guess is this Robin probably had a date with Cody way, way, way more recently than Mary, Christine, or Janelle had before this. Robin and Cody have been married for a year and a half now, and Robin feels like she is doing great with Mary, Christine, and Janelle, and she and Christine even understand each other better now. And we are going to get more insight into Christine and Robin's relationship next episode. And I am here for it. Robin has wanted to be close to her sister wives really bad, she says. I want to be close to my sister wives really bad, you guys. But Christine, Janelle, and Mary have got to want that too. That's what Robin says. Robin says they have got to be able to see that she loves them and that she is here for them. See how she is insinuating that her sister wives are the ones who don't want her, who don't want to be close to her? And then look at Robin's behavior. Look at her words over the seasons. Look at her actions. And it's not hard to see why these women are hesitant to want to be close to the goblin. She's a master manipulator. And if Cody wants to be her best customer, that's fine. But Janelle and Christine are no fools. And Mary got taken for a ride. Who knows how she feels about Robin now, in hindsight, really. Robin says, what's hard in living plural marriage is realizing that your sister wives love you and then being a loving sister wife back. Now, Mary was very close to Robin. Mary did a lot for Robin. She was her ride or die for my sister wife's closet. 
She recruited Robin for Cody. She supported Cody and Robin's relationship, even keeping it a secret for a time from Janelle and Christine. Mary even gave up her legal wife status for Robin and her kids. Robin suggested callously that the marriage license means nothing and Mary should burn it after all Mary sacrificed. But would Robin burn her marriage license since it's so meaningless? Mary doesn't struggle to love Robin. However, Robin really struggles at being loving to her. And Robin also really struggles at being loving to Christine and Janelle. It's amazing how even with Mary, she has trouble being a loving sister wife. Mary, who really, really loved her. When Mary wanted an invite during COVID and Cody deemed her safe, Mary followed all the rules. She lived alone and she was chomping at the bit to see people, to see Robin, to see Robin's kids, to feel like she's part of this family. And Robin refused with some bullshit excuse that the others would be mad that they weren't welcome in Robin's home when Mary was. They weren't mad. No one cared. And Mary was incredibly sad. It was very bad for Mary's mental health to be so isolated following these protocols. Mary was alone for a very long time. Christine and Janelle and their kids were all hanging out following CDC guidelines. Mary was the only one who was alone and Cody was 24 seven at Robin's house and he deemed it okay and Robin made an excuse and Mary was alone all that time. She got not one invite even though Cody was okay with it. A loving sister wife would invite Mary just to make sure Mary was well for Mary's well-being and a loving sister wife would not make up bullshit excuses but Robin didn't care there was nothing in it for her when Mary wanted to go back to school to pursue her dream of being a youth counselor and she wanted to pursue her education Robin was pissed because she wanted more kids and Mary achieving her dream and finding purpose and furthering her education would mean Mary could spend less time investing in Robin's dream of my sister wife's closet. Robin doesn't care about Mary and what would be good for Mary and in her best interests. Robin only is loving when she needs things from Mary. Otherwise, it's example after example of Robin not being there unless it serves her, at least on the show. When Mary was laid up in bed, Robin easily could have driven a mile and popped in just for 10 minutes to quickly see how Mary was doing and make Mary feel loved. She didn't bother because what was in it for Robin? How would she benefit by visiting Mary who was stuck in bed? So of course, Robin didn't show up. Her kids were sick. She had a million excuses. She wasn't willing to take even 10 minutes out of her day to see Mary. Robin mentions that sometimes you will get a sister wife who is not so nice, but she has great sister wives. She loves them. Robin knows there are men and women who struggle to accept their husband or wife's children from a previous marriage. And she says it can cause a big rift in a new relationship. Robin says even though Cody is only there at her house one of every four nights, he is actively involved when he is there. Notice how Christine's issue is Cody is checked out. He's always on his phone. He is disengaged and distant during her nights. Robin gets a different investment level from Cody. Robin says Cody is 100% there for Solomon, Dayton, Aurora, Brianna, and for her. Robin loves Cody for it. Yes, he is 100% there for Robin as he neglects the rest of his family, giving them less investment, less attention, less time, and less attunement to be able to give Robin and her kids the level of investment they are getting to be able to give them more. Everyone is getting significantly less and it's not like Cody is doing things fairly and equally like he used to before Robin joined the family. Cody says he has his father in heaven poking him constantly, nudging him to do it, be a good man, take care of these responsibilities I've given you. So when God gave Cody a miracle by making him fall in love with a woman, Robin and her kids, so it would be, God did that so that it would be easier for Cody to be able to shoulder that responsibility.
Cody says if he hadn't fallen in love with them, he wouldn't have been able to take on all the responsibility. Cody's failing to see he takes all the responsibility for Robin and her kids. He gives them all of his investment and all of his time and all of his energy as he disengages and he disconnects as he neglects his other wives and kids, his family, the ones he would later call the obstacles to his goals in life. And this fake humility bullshit with Cody mentioning God is sickening. If God can open Cody to love Robin and be responsible for her kids, why the fuck can't Cody be man enough to do that in the same way with the same investment level with all of his wives and kids? Cody says, in the end, this is a story about love. Maddie is going to come watch the kids so Robin and her best customer can go on their date night. She can call Maddie to babysit when it serves her for date night, but not to stop by Mary's for 10 minutes to just be supportive and care like a loving sister wife. It's hard for Robin to be loving when there is nothing in it for her. Cody explains that when he goes out in public and he will meet new people, they will ask, where are the rest of your wives? And Cody has to explain he is out with this wife tonight. He says they don't understand that they have individual relationships and those individual relationships are where the strength of the entire family comes from until one relationship with the favorite wife takes precedence, of course, and then that leads to the destruction of the whole family as it once was, like a tornado passing through, wreaking havoc on all that was, and that family, the other wives and kids, become the obstacles to Cody's goals in life, when the family should have always been the only goal itself. Cody spends more time with each individual wife relationship, he and one wife, than he does with the whole family relationship. Robin decided that once Saul is bigger, she says bigger instead of older, when they can leave Saul home, she wants to go dancing with Cody. After seeing Cody's spastic dance moves like a monkey with rabies and Robin's old home video of what she called dancing that looks like she is shaking a shit loose after being constipated, I hope these two go for a private dance class. No one needs the visual abuse of those two seizing and gyrating together. That would look like a fucking medical emergency. It's funny how they both think they are these talented dancers. The delusions in these two are strong. Cody badly wants to go dancing and Robin reveals she met Cody at a church dance in spring 2009. That's when Robin first laid eyes on her best customer. The dance is in the book, but how they first laid eyes on each other was a little different in the book. In the book, Robin first saw Cody in church and get this, it felt like a bolt of lightning went through her, just like how Cody explained seeing Christine this episode. Potato, potato, but the dance was weeks later in the book. Robin says, at this dance, she saw Cody, he looked at her, and it was like a bolt of lightning went right through her. In the book, the bolt of lightning struck Robin at church when she looked at Cody, and the dance was weeks later. But one thing is consistent here. There were lightning bolts, Cody felt lightning with Christine and Robin felt lightning with Cody, whether it was at the dance or when she first saw him in the church, only they know. Robin recounts that she ran into Mary at this dance after being electrocuted by the bolt of lightning. And she asked Mary how she was. Mary was very sweet and Cody says, Mary was attracted to Robin on a sister wife level. Mary immediately pushed Cody to Robin telling Cody, Robin was really cute, and Cody told Mary, Robin is cute, but, 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 she is divorced. Cody's initial reaction was no, 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 and of course we know Cody vowed never to marry a woman who had kids from another marriage. Cody didn't want to raise another man's kids. He didn't want to blend families, but for Robin, he made an exception. Mary was very excited about Robin, and she pushed Cody to dance with her. Cody says the first thing that attracted him to Robin was this energy. Robin and Cody are seated on the confessional couch. He has his arm around her and they are looking into each other's eyes. 
Cody says they have a buzz between them. Robin nods and she says, yeah, she knows he is totally pussy whipped. On their date, Cody asks Robin if she remembers what he got her on her first birthday that they had together. It's amazing that Cody remembers Robin's first birthday with him, the gift he got her even, but he doesn't know how old his kids are or when their birthdays are, and he sometimes forgets to call on their birthdays. But with Robin, he remembers the gift he got her on their first birthday together. Cody got Robin the real engagement ring, the ring that wasn't a string. Conveniently, Robin has the real engagement ring and the string ring with her in her wallet, and she pulls them out for cameras. They flash back to September 2009 when Cody and Robin I fuck and have hot chocolate when Cody gives her the string ring. And Cody says it was a fun experience falling in love. Robin agrees and she asks if Cody feels like he is too old to have more kids. Cody is wondering if after all of these nights where Saul is keeping Robin up or on his night Saul is keeping her up and him up, they're both up, if he will be able to hack it anymore. And Robin says it's a matter of what ages they will be when Saul has graduated and when he's ready to leave home. Cody will be 63 when Saul graduates. When Cody wanted to have kids with Robin, he asked if Cody was sure because Cody has 16 other kids and three other wives, so Robin really wanted to know that Cody would be involved. Robin knows Cody has a demand on his time. It's not like he has to be over at her house all the time, but we all know he was, and we know Robin's rule that he can't be away from her or the kids for more than a few days or they get anxious. And Robin's neediness and expectation created a situation where he gave Robin all of him as a husband. And he gave Robin's kids all of him as a father to the detriment and to the neglect of all of the other wives and kids. Cody could not possibly give Robin all she expected from him and all that he had without giving significantly less to everyone else. And rather than trying to be fair and equal when adding this new wife, Cody clearly prioritized Robin and Robin and her kids have this great experience as everyone else suffered with Cody's absence, with Cody's distance. He might be there one night of every four, but he is not engaged. Robin says there is no way for Cody to always be there, but when he was there, she wanted Cody's interest to be there and she wanted him to be actively involved. I wonder now that Robin has Cody 24-7, her best customer, is she happy? Is she receiving the same status as favorite wife and the same engagement level and the same investment levels from Cody? Is Cody happy, free from his obstacles to his goals in life? It seems to me now Cody will only have one place to put all his frustration and Robin will get sick of the best customer shtick 24 seven and things could easily sour. Cody was offended by Robin's concerns in his investment level and involvement. And he says he spent all this time and all this energy proving over and over and over that he can love his kids, that he can love all of his wives and he can put energy toward all of this. So Cody was pissed with Robin's concerns. He was put out at the time that Robin mentioned them. And Robin says, it wasn't a question about Cody's ability. It was about Cody's capacity. Can he do more? And clearly the answer is no, because now he only has one wife and her kids. Cody and Robin have decided to head to a movie after dinner. Cody says, in this year and a half, he has been married to Robin. He doesn't think they have had any major struggles because Robin brings a concern to him and she gently communicates about it. So they haven't had any issues. The difference is Cody listens. Cody wants to please Robin. With Christine, when she communicates, no matter how gently, he immediately shuts down. He resents Christine for bringing it up. His mood shifts. He doesn't communicate. He doesn't care. He doesn't care how Christine feels. He doesn't want to make an effort from his heart. Cody loves Robin, or he thinks he loves Robin. He cares about her. 
He does not love Christine or he would allow her to communicate and he would respond and make efforts just the way he does with Robin. Cody listens when Robin speaks. He respects her. He does not hear or respect Christine. Robin says, you love Cody. You fall in love with him. But you have to also develop a love for your sister wives too. She says, it's a package. You have to work on your sister wife relationships. You can't be lazy. The relationships don't come easily. They have to talk. They have to adapt. They have to evolve. They have to work at it. Next, it's a family birthday for Dayton and Mary who share a birthday. Robin and Christine made all the food and they planned this for the family. They're over at Mary's house. Dayton and Mary have a special bond because they share the same birthday. And Cody says the biggest challenge in this year and a half since he and Robin got married is blending the families together. Robin has been concerned. She has been worried about how the older kids particularly Hunter, would accept Saul into the family as their brother. Cody says that he checks his kids' social medias and he found Maddie made a very sweet post about Saul that pleased him very much, a picture of Maddie and Saul cuddling together. And he says Maddie always mentions loving her family and it means a lot to Robin. Saul has bonded everyone together. She says they are a family there is no denying it, according to Robin. Finally, Mary gets her trip. For Mary's birthday, Cody is taking Mary to Mexico. Cody knows he didn't do anything last year for Mary for her birthday or for her anniversary. He says they didn't have the time or the money. So he is taking Mary now on this trip to Mexico. Robin is wrapping the flyer for Mexico in a jewelry box on the fly. So this trip makes up for last year. Mexico is Cody and Mary's favorite vacation spot in Playa del Carmen. Mary is thrilled. She didn't expect it. She looks so happy that Cody did this for her. Cody says, what we are seeing today at this family birthday is all of them in a really good place with each other. He says, maybe to friends or outsiders, it looks like they have this Pollyanna relationship, like it's all perfect. What? Cody is delusional AF if he thinks people look at the few family gatherings they have and think, oh, it's ideal and perfect. No one in their right mind ever got that impression, ever. Cody assumes that people perceive things as he expects to want to be seen. No one in their right mind sees this and thinks, wow, the perfect family. It's so easy. Everything's great. Cody says it's far from ideal. It's far from perfect. And Mary adds that they continue working very hard. And Cody says, don't ask him tomorrow because it might be a bad day. He says it's a committed relationship between all five of them and it doesn't mean it's easy. Only an idiot would see the few moments that look ideal on the show with all of the struggle and the discontent the wives face, having to do the mental gymnastics they have to do to put up with a husband like Cody in a situation like this, and mistakenly think, oh, it's ideal, it's so perfect, it's so easy. It must be a lot easier for Cody now, though, now that he has burned almost every bridge, and now that he has succeeded in ridding himself of the obstacles to his goals in life. All of Cody's wives but Robin are gone now. Most of Cody's older kids don't speak to him. Cody is obstacle-free now. He's free to reach his goals in life. Cody gets to live monogamously with Robin as her best customer. Let's see what goals Cody reaches. Let's see how happy and chill this man is next season and how full of joy and love the goblin is when she is no longer the favorite wife at the top of the hierarchy and she's the only wife stuck with her best customer chained to only her 24 seven in monogamous hell. When Cody is angry, when he is bitter and resentful and moody and there is only one wife, Robin, who will no longer be the favorite wife, will now be the target of Cody's moods, anger, and resentment. Robin is now the only wife chained to her best customer in misery, and I can't wait to see how that goes next season. But luckily, if things don't work out and they stay in Arizona, Arizona is a community property state, and Robin is a legal wife. She gets 50% of it all, baby. That does it for this episode. To my YouTube viewers, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts 
on all things Sister Wives. If you like, don't forget to follow this podcast wherever you listen and give it all the stars. I'll be back next week with the next episode of My Sister Wives Rewatch, where we get a closer look at Christine and Robin's relationship in Season 4, Episode 3, Brutal Honesty. Thanks for listening. I'll see you soon. Bye.